here in Houston. All right, see you in a few days. And so, like Josh reported, it looks like they're getting ready to move the crew over to the medical tent while they'll get their initial medical screenings and get a chance to get out of those Sokol launch and entry suits. You can see them being carried in their seats uh, to the medical tent. It's currently set up about 100 yards away from the landing site. Be careful on the field. Okay. okay, the evacuation is complete. I'll show you. You can get a good view of the medical tent there. It was uh, constructed by the personnel from RC Energia upon uh, their arrival at the landing zone. From now inside, going to change out of those Sokol launch and entry suits and undergo that Im initial medical screening uh, before being uh, loaded into some ATVs to drive them to the awaiting helicopters, uh, which will then transport them uh, to Karaganda. Sergey, everything was very well audible. We could hear everything really well. Everything is great. Are we wrapping up? Yes, we are. Okay, I'm wrapping up. There you can see the Soyuz craft back uh, positioned upright. I didn't quite get it. The descent module successfully delivering these departing Expedition 35 astronauts from their uh, previous home on board the International Space Station back down to Earth. Three wrapped up 146 days in space, 144 days on board the station today. And with that successful landing in Kazakhstan at 9.31 p.m. Central Time, 8.31 a.m. Kazakh Time. Crew now inside the medical tent. Uh, next step will be to fly to Karaganda, where they will then uh, board an aircraft. Uh, Romanenko heading towards the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Star City, Russia. Hatfield and Marshburn uh, bound for the Johnson Space Center back here in Houston. All of today's landing operations uh, going flawlessly. The vehicle showing no issues throughout. Everything happening right along the timeline, uh, even getting uh, pretty decent communication with the crew uh, during the descent. Great.
Your RSC Energia crews will continue saving and processing the vehicle following its successful descent through the Earth's atmosphere. You can see the outer shell uh, definitely exposed to some pretty high heat. Uh, temperatures rising as high as 2,500 uh, degrees Fahrenheit during the peak, peak portions of heating uh, during that entry through the Earth's atmosphere. The heat shield on the space, the bottom of the spacecraft, uh, absorbing the brunt of that, uh, being jettisoned uh, after parachute deployment, though. Right now, the crew is erecting the stand. Uh, used to extract uh, crew normally when it's uh, left upright or uh, the items uh, prior to crew extraction. So use having some down mass capability, uh, generally uh, bringing back down a, a small supply of uh, experiment items, uh, generally uh, biological samples from the crew members on board. Could you repeat, please? The buttons are on top. On the other side. Just put the bag over. Is everything ready? GCDC. Okay, the impact to that Recovery forces continuing to work on the Soyuz craft there in the vast expanse of Kazakhstan. Unintelligible. Again, successful landing uh, taking place uh, at 9.31 p.m. Central Time unofficially. The crew safely extracted and now inside of the medical tent undergoing their initial medical screenings before moving on uh, to be loaded on helicopters and uh, moving back to the uh, airport at Karaganda. And here you can see that landing site landing just on target. There, the medical tent and some of the all-terrain vehicles backed up, uh, awaiting the departure of the crew members.
So right now we're getting some replays uh, from landing taken uh, just moments ago. Uh, this from inside the cockpit of one of the Russian Mi-8 helicopters, uh, 12 of which uh, scheduled uh, to uh, support this landing. This NASA Public Affairs Officer Josh Barkley reported two of which uh, suffering a few mechanical issues, but uh, obviously all of the necessary personnel uh, able to get to the landing zone uh, successfully. Eight of these helicopters staging directly out of the airport at Jezka has gone uh, just to the northwest of the landing zone. Uh, four of which heading towards a midway point between the ballistic landing site and the targeted landing zone. Uh, the other four uh, deploying directly to the target landing zone. Uh, here you can see some views from the helicopter as they circled around the landing site in a racetrack-like fashion, uh, awaiting the final touchdown of that Soyuz craft. Uh, here at this point, uh, under the uh, canopy of the main parachute, which expands to cover an area of over 1,000 square meters. These helicopters carried uh, many of the essential personnel uh, to the landing zone, including flight surgeons, uh, as well as uh, landing site personnel in charge of uh, safing the vehicle and extracting the crew and also uh, erecting the medical tent. At this point, the Soyuz spacecraft was descending at a rate of just about 7.2 meters per second. Once there, you can see the soft landing rockets fire on just about two seconds before landing, uh, slowing into a final descent rate of just 0.8 meters while right above the ground. Is it standing? Yes, it's standing. Crew members on the helicopter reporting the vehicle uh, standing up. The vehicle appeared to be rolled onto its side uh, for the actual extraction of the crew. Here you can see one of the first helicopters to touch down, moving in on the landing zone uh, just a few moments after uh, that successful touchdown. On its side. have it once they got a, a little bit closer look they were able to discern that the uh, spacecraft was in fact on its side.